Hi everyone, and welcome back to Managing Octopus Deploy. In this training, we are walking through how to manage an Octopus Deploy instance and all the nuance and configuration that you need to know about as an Octopus Deploy Manager. In the previous module, we went through and we installed a listening tentacle. For this module, we will be installing a polling tentacle. It's a slightly different type of tentacle uh, that some of our users opt to use when they need to make outbound only requests. So let's go ahead and get started. For this module, we are only going to be installing a deployment target listening tentacle uh, because ostensibly there's no difference between installing a polling worker versus a deployment target. Uh, in the previous module, we already walked through how what are the differences in how you install the deployment target versus worker. It's gonna be the exact same for polling or listening. So let's go ahead and the first thing that we need to do is we're gonna to need to create an API key. Now an API key is gonna be used by the polling tentacle when it registers itself with Octopus Deploy. And this will make sense in a couple of minutes when we get into the tutorial. So I'm just gonna call this polling tentacle registration. If you are creating an API key, I highly recommend you set it to expire after a set amount of time. So I'm gonna go ahead and have this expire after 30 days. It says I only need this for a single video, so it, there's no reason for this to last for very much longer. I'm gonna go ahead and copy this to my clipboard. So let's come back to the tentacle manager that we had before. If you are unfamiliar with the tentacle manager, this is what will appear the very first time uh, you install the tentacle service, say on Windows. If you are using Linux, then you won't have a tentacle manager. Uh, however, everything will be done via the command line. If you do need to access the tentacle manager, uh, you can, let's go ahead and do that by closing this and then reopening it back up. We're going to add a new tentacle because we already have two. We have one for our deployment target. One is our worker that we've pre-installed in the previous module. And in this case, I'm gonna call a new instance called polling tentacle. I'm going to go ahead and get started. And again, the reason why I'm going through the user interface in a Windows platform is that if you are doing something via Linux or you're gonna be automating your tentacle installation, it is important that you know how everything works and the best way to see that is visually. And so that's why we're going through this wizard. Now, the difference between a listening tentacle, which is the default, and a polling tentacle is that the, it, it, it depends on the direction and which the tentacle is making requests. With a listening tentacle, all communication is inbound from the octopus server. With a polling tentacle, all communication is outbound to the Octopus server. From a security point of view, for a lot of our customers, especially if they're using Octopus Cloud, a polling tentacle is typically what we find most of our customers are using with Octopus Cloud because it's making outbound requests. It typically is a lot easier to get a outbound request approved via firewall exception or anything along those lines versus an inbound request. Functionally, there's no, there's no difference between a listening tentacle and a polling tentacle. They both do the exact same thing. It's just the way that they communicate with the Octopus server. Let's go ahead and click on polling tentacle, and you'll notice a few other things will appear. Um, so let's go ahead and go through the various configurations. Uh, we do not have a prox proxy, but if you were gonna set up some sort of proxy that sits between the polling tentacle and the octopus server, this is where you would configure it. Now we need to provide the octopus server URL. So I'm going to, for this purpose, 8080, because that's what I have set up. Now for authentication mode, I'm gonna be using the API key that I created earlier. If you're going to be automating your tentacle installation, which you should be, um, I would probably install a tentacle, one, ten, one or two tentacles via the UI, uh, but I would highly recommend you configuring it to be automated. Definitely want to use the API key. Um, it is much more secure as you can have an API key 
be expired and it's much easier to use. So let's make sure that I can hopefully connect to this. And so it will let me know that it's the credentials are valid. And then unlike a listening tentacle, within the setup wizard for polling tentacles, you have to register the machine because there is not a user interface on the Octopus server to register a polling tentacle. And this is just due to how discovery works and how the registration process works within Octopus Deploy. I'm going to be configuring a deployment target. Whether I pick a deployment target or worker, it's going to be basically the same thing. So I'm going to go ahead and click on Next. You give it the space. Give it the, the you give it a name just like you did with the other one. So I'm going to call this Dev Target 02. Give it the environment, and it's pulling these values from the Octopus server itself, as you can see. I have development and then the Trident Web UI is which I defined in a previous video as well. If I had any sort of tenants, which I don't, then I would select that here as well. Just like before, I am given the script. So I can click on show script. And this is the script that you could run to install your Octopus Deploy tentacle in a polling mode in a more of an automated fashion. Everything will pretty much remain the same. The thing that you're going to have to change in your automation will be the name that you give, obviously. Um, I typically recommend the machine name because I have multiple tentacle instances. I can't do something like that, as well as the space, the environment, and the role. We have scripts on our documentation that you can leverage uh, that will show you how to differentiate between uh, the different servers, how to provide that information as part of the script uh, in a much more automated fashion. So let's go ahead and click on install. And I should note that that API key is only going to be used for this registration process. After this registration process is done, the Octopus Deploy Tentacle will communicate over its own secure channel it will never use that API key ever again. It is just there to facilitate the communication back and forth because it's making some web API requests and it needs the ability to authenticate. So if I go ahead and click on finish, I have a new thumbprint, AB36C64. If I come back to my infrastructure, I now have a new polling tentacle that has just appeared. And I have, I can see the thumbprint AB3664. So I have installed a polling tentacle as well as a listening tentacle on previous modules. So this is how you install a polling tentacle uh, for installing a worker, exact same process, except instead of selecting deployment target, I select worker in the wizard or in the script file, I specify worker instead of a deployment target. And that is it. That is how you install a polling tentacle and register it with Octopus Deploy. Thank you very much for watching and have a great rest of your day.